I didn't bring this story today to the table because I wanted to bag on Kyle and Crystal and have joy in doing so. I think that this is the pressing question that w what's going on. And we're at a certain time right now where there are still people, not just Kyle and Crystal, who are making the argument that Democrats are still inherently better than Republicans. And sometimes people are saying way better. And there's people out there like Van Jones who's still kind of bragging that Uncle Joe has done the right thing. You know, uh, David Axelrod is another one. You know, oh, my God, you know, Joe Biden deserves credit for all his, you know, uh, things that he did well. Is You know, what I'm trying to say is that we have to get away from the two-party duopoly no matter what. At the end of the day, and I said this when I interviewed Dr. Cornel West, I said, Dr. Cornel West, if I'm looking back on what Joe Biden has just done and what Donald Trump did, and I had the vote. You had a gun to my head and I had to vote for either one of them. I'd vote for Donald Trump. That doesn't mean I support Donald Trump. It just means that what I've seen that Joe Biden has done and the Democrats have done especially is really, really bad. And the risk versus reward when it comes to the risk and the negativities of the Democratic Party, I think they are way higher than what the Republicans are doing. Now, I, I don't think the Republicans are doing anything good because, you know, when it comes to censorship, we see a lot of Republicans who are down for censorship, especially if you watch those hearings, right? They wanted just certain people censored. People, you know, who were, who were you know, China, they want people who are pro-China censored or pro-Iran censored or pro-Palestinian censored. We see that in a lot of hearings, but censorship is bad across the board. I do think there are some spots where you have these libertarian-minded Republicans like Thomas Massey, sometimes Rand Paul, who do speak, you know, about pro uh, speech, and that's very, very important. But with the negatives out there, it's really hard for me to really say with a straight face anymore that the Democrats are better than the Republicans inherently. And I think it's important to point out certain things that some of these Democrats are going to try to make a case for Joe Biden being the choice because of Trump. But Trump, right? And a lot of that shines through over here. So I think there's some great points made. And I think Brianna Joy Gray did a great job. And she said some things that are really important in this discussion. So we're going to go through them. We've highlighted some of the points that we need to discuss. And this is going to be a discussion for quite some time. Regardless of these three talking about this, we're going to hear people out there say, you got to vote for Joe Biden at the end of the day because we have to stop the impending fascism of Donald Trump. I believe Bernie Sanders used the term creeping authoritarianism. I disagree. You know what I'm saying? So let's take a listen and let's point out some of the, the, the do's and the don'ts and uh, judge for ourselves. And the reason that I voted for him primarily at that time, even though I thought he had an atrocious record in the Senate, even though, you know, complicit in the Iraq war, complicit in bad trade deals, complicit. Remember that. Remember that. Iraq war, Kosovo war, trade deals. You know, like terrible things on crime, all that stuff, right? The primary reason I voted for him was because of the National Labor Relations Board and because labor politics and building out union power in this country, to me, is one of the most important goals and something that I think we all share and leftists generally believe. But it's false. The Democratic Party has abandoned labor back when Carter was the president. We haven't had a substantial bill come out there or help for workers in the United States for quite some time. OK, we have no manufacturing. We don't fix things anymore. The whole system itself, nothing is systemically changed. And I got even pissed off when Donald Trump tried to parrot this bullshit like things are so much better. No, they're not. Money is still, the majority of our money is still going to the military industrial complex, which Joe Biden was horrible at. I used to say Donald Trump would need four terms to catch up to the damage that Joe Biden has caused because Joe Biden has been doing it since the early 70s. But please, if you want to sit there and gloat and act like labor is so great in the United States, Please, Crystal. Now, in retrospect, not only do I feel good about that vote, he's actually surprised me. Now, I've got all kinds of issues, right? On the National Labor Relations Board, though, specifically, they just issued a ruling which could be a complete game changer for unions. And just to explain to people a little bit, basically, in the past, bosses could union bust with impunity, no accountability. Now, the process going forward is completely changed. If bosses are caught union busting, then that's it. There's no more election. It's canceled. Mm -hmm. They have to recognize the union and start bargaining with them. That's the biggest shift in labor relations we've had in our lifetime. Because there has been no shift for quite some time. And what are you going to do? I said this before. What are we going to unionize next? DoorDash? 
It's the actual economy and the workforce that we don't have here anymore that our grandparents had, which they were able to buy a house on, which they were able to go on vacation two weeks every year on, which they were able to send their kids to college, which they were able to die peacefully in a hospital because they had the finances. That's all gone. We have a gig economy. We have a service economy. That's the problem itself. And they're going to try to take this one ruling and build it out like it's something great. So that's why at this point, I'm not only, you know, it's likely to, I'm a Marianne supporter as well, but we can all see the most likely outcome is it's going to be Trump versus Biden. Not only would I say that protecting the Biden National Labor Relations Board is important enough for me to vote for Joe Biden, but it is important enough that I would actively encourage, I'm not going to shame them for whatever they decide to do, but I would actively encourage people who are in a swing state to vote for Joe Biden, if for no other reason than to protect that board. Remember when they started off these peeps that they were so anti-establishment? What the hell happened? Where did they go? When did things change because of this one incident? What about freedom of speech? Biden, the Biden administration and Democrats have been so pro-fascist in canceling out any speech that doesn't go along with the state narrative. It's sickening. Terrible. Way beyond what Trump did. What about the wars? You want to talk about pro-war Joe? And I'll get to it because I know they're going to mention it some more once again. They're going to try to play it off that Donald Trump. And once again, guys, Donald Trump is not the peace candidate. I'm not saying that he is. But compared to Joe Biden, as soon as Joe Biden got in, we started playing games in the Black Sea and started saber rattling with Russia. As soon as they got in, the Blinkins, the Sullivans, the Victoria Newlands. These people, when it comes to Russia, they are anti-Russia AF. And to try to paint in any other way is disingenuous. Here's Brie. If if you believe the path to meaningful change is going to primarily come through a kind of, I don't say this dismissively, but a kind of labor incrementalism, meaning there are meaningful labor gains that happen, but are not the type of which would radically transform the system the way that some people want to happen in a shorter term. And the way that some people might argue Bernie Sanders represented his movement as as the goal of being, Mm -hmm. then that's a defensible position. But I also, I have to hold space for the reality that there are people for whom, even as significant as those labor gains are, it's simply insufficient. And what they see when they look at the trajectory of the last 50, 60 years of Democratic Party politics, when they look, when they read Listen Liberal and and see the longer game, the Democratic Party making a concerted choice to back away from labor in a way that has gone on for decades and isn't necessarily turning around as a consequence of Joe Biden having some good NLRB appointments. So on the nose. I mean, it's been 50-something odd years since the Democrats have stood behind labor who've come up with any significant type of bill to help labor. And she's absolutely right. There's no significant enough change that you go, oh, my God, we have to vote for Biden because these insignificant gains are so important that we can't let Donald Trump in because he's anti-union and he's like the Republicans. He's a union buster. Once again, not saying that Donald Trump is great when it comes to this, too, as well. And I couldn't stand all the guff. I should say, the hot air that would come out of Donald Trump's mouth about the economy. What really has fundamentally changed? No, 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 no. The military budget still went up as it's going up under Joe Biden every single year. The homeless numbers still growing every year the way it's still growing every single year under Joe Biden. So nothing has significantly changed. So I called out both sides. And I think Bree has it on the nose over here that you should go look for another outside option because if not now, when? If not us, who? And that's very, very important here. But the, the, the conversation still continues because no matter what, not just in this conversation, but out there in the real world, you're going to hear our friends out there who are, and I think some of us experienced them over the weekend, that are going to still there, sit there and try to convince you that the Democratic Party is the way to go because the Republican Party is anti-labor, is racist, is more pro-war, is more anti-speech. And that's just simply not the case. Because they always agree when it comes to war. It always comes. To, they always agree when it comes to screwing the middle class. It's like WD, WWE wrestling. It's the same party, baby. You're on the left. You can acknowledge a W in the instances you get it while still pushing for more. I mean, a perfect example is what's happening in Minnesota right now. Minnesota has a one seat. De- 
I want you to listen to this too as well because this also goes deep into what's going on in politics today. I have never been a great Matt Stoller fan. Like I, He wasn't my champion, but he did say a lot of things in which American people need to do to start paying attention to policy, how policy is made. You know, okay, the names they put, they put these rosy little names on all this policy. You'll notice that you won't, nobody will mention the infrastructure bill because it's really not about infrastructure. Okay, these names of these bills have all beautiful rose color names to make you think they're good and make you think you're getting some type of gain, but that's not the truth. And what he does over here when he starts mentioning Minnesota's Democratic policies that they enacted, which has had nothing to do with Joe Biden anyways, but he's still going to make the argument, the case that the Democrats are better than the Republicans. There are certain things I want to point out. Just listen for a second and then I'll tell you what I have to point out. Democrat majority. We got universal free school meals, legal weed, carbon free electricity by 2040, tax rebates for the working class up to $1,300 if you make under $150,000 a year, 12 weeks paid family leave, 12 weeks paid sick leave. They banned conversion therapy. They did red flag laws for guns. They did universal background checks for guns. They did automatic voter registration, public free college if you make under 80K, a ban on PFAs, which is the forever chemicals, $2.2 billion increase in K-12 school funding, sectoral bargaining, bargaining for nursing home workers. These things are all not little wins. They are Huge wins. And he's also fundamentally wrong about a lot of these things. Let's start with the first one, red flag laws. Now, this is a very big problem with a lot of leftists and liberals today. They're too kind and not, they're too trustworthy of Big Brother. When you talk about red flag laws to a person who's an anti-Second Amendment or who wants gun control, who's very concerned with the mass murders that are going on nowadays, it's a lot more nuanced to that. Because here's the problem with red flag laws. Who's saying you can have a gun and who can't have a gun? And that's what I'm saying. There's always this kind of blind belief by leftists who go, okay, yeah, they're going to get make sure that crazies can't have guns. That's not the case. You're allowing the government to once again choose who can own a weapon, who can't own a weapon. And when you start allowing them to make these rules, big brother, then all shit's going to break loose. And that's a common problem when it comes to leftists nowadays, right? They, oh, yeah, yeah, it's being done. Who's doing it? I don't know, but I know it's being done. I know there's going to be red flag laws out there going to prevent people from getting guns. The crazies aren't going to be able to get guns, but yet you don't know who's making the decision and how they're making the decision. Same thing when he says with automatic voter registration. I can tell you this from my experience living in Nevada. It's a bad thing because most people, a lot of people don't care about the election. They don't want to vote. But guess what? Automatic registration in a lot of cases, too, means that a ballot's going to go out, a mail-in ballot. And if that person is not concerned about it or care about it, you now have a ballot floating around that can go in at any time without that person even voting for it. It's a negative thing. And that's the problem. And once again, well, who's who's securing the chain of custody in your elections? I don't know. Somebody must be doing it. No, chain of custody when it comes to elections is in the view of us, the people in front of our eyes. And that's why this talk is such BS sometimes, because it's the same old leftist liberal bullshit in which you're allowing Big Brother to make choices for you, the citizen. It's bad. Yeah, there are some good things there when you talk about universal meals, help for nurses and whatnot. But you also don't even understand what's going on with these policies right now, the way they're written, what's going to happen. When they say about sustainable energy and all this other stuff, well, what does that mean? Does that mean they can crush the small company, the small farmer? That's what a lot of the ESG program is. And that's the way a lot of liberals think and leftists think nowadays that really need to open up their eyes. They got to understand that the government and the ruling class and the elitists do not care about you. They don't have your best interest in mind. So blindly giving them power, as Mr. Kuklinski says, is a negative thing. And also it has nothing to do with Joe Biden. It's freaking Minnesota. But he's trying to make the fundamental argument that Democrats are better than Republicans. Bullshit. They're the same, homeboy. They're the same. You're accusing me of minimizing the accomplishments. I think that you might be minimizing his failures and the extent to which that he knowingly, it seems, lied about what he was willing to do and, in fact, dramatically underachieved. Risk versus reward. Are these little incremental victories better or worth it from the negative stuff he did? I don't care where you stand on the whole COVID situation. You know what I'm saying? My body, my choice, forcing somebody to do something they don't want to do is a negative thing. 
all the money that was made off it and people continue to make off it is a negative thing. The risks don't outweigh the rewards. The fact that you get a little now, oh my God, they got to be recognized as a union. Is that worth it for World War III? That as soon as Joe Biden came into power, all him and all his freaking nut jobs started saber rattling with another nuclear power? Is that worth it? It may be worth it to you, homeboy, because you got millions of dollars now. But for the people on the ground, it ain't worth it. It's not been worth it for quite some time. His campaign promises. And for you, that might be a hop, skip, and a jump. Okay, but he did more than I Thank expect. You. You're setting your expectations lower than the expectations that he set for the American public in the context of his campaign. And I, I completely respect and appreciate that that doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. I don't know if it's because... I have experienced six figures student debt. I don't know your life. I'm not trying to make any presumptions about it. I don't know if it's because I have I had a certain kind of life experiences or that other people who kind of share my view have these kind of life experiences. But for millions of us, 44 million in fact, that kind of bait and switch is unforgivable when you recognize, as you have both recognized, that it was in his power to sign an executive order, to deliver overwhelmingly for the people that whose votes he needs right now. So the argument is not with me. The argument is with the millions of Americans who feel betrayed by Joe Biden and his campaign promises. If we have a contract agreement for you to fix the hole in my roof and I give you $100, and you come into my house and instead you restage my living room and it looks beautiful, that simply wasn't the agreement. And so I am fine. I'm happy to acknowledge the furniture placement is gorgeous. I love the floral arrangements, but that's not what we bargained for. And if, you're, if, you're, if your desire is to push the Democratic Party left, you have to, Chris Hedges says, says this all the time, it's a politics of fear. If you are more afraid of electing Trump than the Democratic Party is, you are never going to be able to exert any leverage on them at all. And that is so true. Thank you, Brie, for saying that. And I don't always agree with Brie, but I agree with her here, here as well, because she's simply being very compassionate to what the people in the world are going through, despite where she is economically and socially in her lifestyle right now. She's speaking directly from the feeling of the people that if we don't do this now, we'll never get this. Kyle and Crystal are speaking from their own social status. Well, you know, he exceeded my expectations. I, I didn't think he'd do this. So that's a win. You know, I, I didn't think he would get this done. So, wow. Isn't that awesome? That's very selfish, homeboy. Right? Come on. There are people out there starving. There are people out there. Remember, our generation is going to have less than our, our parents' generation. And that's a bad thing. We're going in the wrong direction. The homeless number is growing every single year. We need to stop it right now. And I'm glad she spoke from that point of view while the other two are sitting there, the latte liberals, the cappuccino communists, whatever you want to call them, and going, oh, my God, you know, I didn't expect him to do this, and he did this. Isn't that great? No. It doesn't affect you. But it affects everybody else there out in the street. It affects all the moms and dads at home that can't get a job nowadays. That's who it affects. A little bit more. It's the fact, based on how the Democratic Party is going to respond to Cornell West's uh, election bid, it is more likely that Donald Trump gets elected with Cornell West in the race. And that, to me, is a massive loss because we know what his record is. We you know what a massive loss is to me? And I'm sorry to stop it right now, is the fact that you are now speaking the exact opposite of the way you used to speak. The two of you guys used to be anti-establishment, and now you're saying the same crap, the same vote-shaming shit that we heard years ago you're repeating the same uh, playbook and it's upsetting to even me that you two were there and you're saying this crap you know what his national labor relations board we was we know who his labor secretaries were and how they were engaged in all this union busting and I, so i see a much more direct connection between that moving the ball in our direction than you know cornell west getting five percent and either his candidacy not really mattering at all or being used once again to, you know, smear the left and marginalize the left and say these are just the people that are interested in getting Trump elected. So to that second point, I, I'm just going to be honest. Not only do I not care about arguments that the left is going to be smeared, I think it's silly because no matter what we do, the left is going to get smeared. Bernie won Nevada and it was, oh, my God, we're going to decapitate people in Central, Central Park. Uh, you know, 
it is, it is, I think, deeply unrealistic to expect that there's ever going to be a left movement that genuinely challenges power in this country that's not going to be smeared. And if you are choosing your political strategy on the basis of what's going to get you a pat on the head from MSNBC, and I know this, I'm not, that's not what I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to mischaracterize you. But that is <laughs> but I'm naive. Just, listen, that's <laughs> wow, right? I'm so sorry. I should have stopped that right now. She just, well, we got to watch how she throws them into their face. This is great. Bernie won Nevada, and it was, oh, my God, we're going to decapitate people in Central, Central Park. Watch her catch herself, uh, though, too. You know, it's great. Like, it, is, it is, I think, deeply unrealistic to expect that there's ever going to be a left movement that genuinely challenges power in this country that's not going to be smeared. And if you are... Choosing your political strategy on the basis of what's going to get you a pat on the head from MSNBC. I know this. I'm not. That's not what I'm. Yeah, she's, uh, she's down, she, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking to somebody that would like to be on MSNBC or possibly The View, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> she was like, oh, 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 shit, I'm insulting them right to their face right now and stuff because that's where it's at. That's where they're going. It's like they want to get back to that mainstream media news because that's what they're parodying, Kyle and, and Crystal. And it was great to see Brianna catch herself insulting, you know, them right in front of their faces. Certainly Holy not on purpose. I don't mean to mischaracterize yeah. you, but that is. <laughs> but I'm naive. Listen, that's. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was great. And also, too, as well. Listen, let me say this much too, as well. I think it's desperate. We need a third party in there. To and we need a fourth party and, and a, fifth a fifth party, party and, and a stuff, sixth party. Right? You know, they're pretending like there's some sort of evil happening with us even having a conversation about third party. That ought to show you right now yes. how propagandized we are. Yes, yes. And we start with the third, then we go to the fourth, right? And, but the 5%, what Crystal and Kyle just downplayed there is huge public funding if you get to that 5%. And believe you me, when Cornell West announced, I thought he had a great chance to get to that 5%. Don't think so right now because not enough reaching across the aisle and the populist message is gone. But it's huge. And the fact that they're downplaying that is another just spit in the face of the everyday citizens who desperately need another voice outside of the two-party duopoly, the corporately controlled WWE uniparty. It's huge. And it was downplayed. I got more. I mean, do you acknowledge that Biden is better than Trump? Do you? I genuinely want to know. Like, how do you assess? Do you see their like I, roughly? I, 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 I got to stop you. I, I, you know, on the, that kind of question, I I just don't understand. You know, that question uh, that I have to answer that question for you. Why do I have to answer that question? Because at the end of the day, if you vote for Cornell West, then you're admitting that you're allowing Trump to get in office. In other words, a vote for Cornell is a vote for Trump. And it's just a smear tactic. It's just another tactic they used before, the vote shaming. And they're going to use it again. That right there, Steph, was the reason why I brought that video right there. Because it's not only it's not only Crystal and Kyle are doing that. The whole mainstream media leftist apparatus is doing it again. Mm -hmm. Again. And that's why I thought it was important to talk about those lists of accomplishments to say that's full of shit. We should talk about risk versus reward. But they're going to use that rhetoric again. Just admit it right now. You, can you admit to me Donald Trump is not as good as Joe Biden, that Joe Biden's better? <laughs> they're going to use that again. They're setting you up because it's the only playbook we have. And But you know what? It takes a lot. You know, when I did my interview with Dr. Cornell West and then do dissidents, the boys over there. Mm -hmm. They did a review of it. They said what Pasta said right over there when he admitted that he thought that Trump was better than Biden right out of the gate and they gave me accolades for that. I think that's something that should be said simply, right? Because I believe World War III and nuclear annihilation is the worst thing possible. And Joe Biden has showed that it's more likely, he showed us, it's more likely that we get into World War III with him than it was Donald Trump. He's not the peace candidate once again, but you know he didn't. He refused at one point. He didn't want to arm the Ukrainians at one point. He refused to attack Iran. You know he was refused to being pushed into certain areas where the military industrial complex was at. And guess what? He would even say stupid shit sometimes. There is a military industrial complex. They hate me because these generals won all these wars, but the <laughs> troops they love me. He would say shit like that, and that's important. Did he really mean it? I don't know. 
But in our public discourse, that's repeated. And I was really out and about, and I would hear your Trump people going, isn't Donald Trump more of a peace candidate than the Democratic Party? This Ukrainian war is bullshit. We shouldn't be doing this. And I have to scratch my head and go, I remember the first time I became a Democrat was because of George W. Bush and this preemptive attack, and that's what was stapled upon the neoconservative Republican Party. But now the Democratic Party is show that they're more pro-war than the Republican Party. You got people like Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey and Rand Paul voting and talking against the Ukraine war, but the fraud squad all voting for it. So that's what they're doing. They're going to use the, the same bottom tactics. Line is, the bottom line is that somebody who's already pledging their support of Joe Biden right now, it's, it's September 2023, and you're supporting Joe Biden right now. Why? I don't even understand why you're already showing your support. I don't understand all those unions that came out in support of Joe Biden. It's September 2023. Come get my vote. Come get my vote. And, and you know what? There was a point in this interview where Bree said, say, well, how dare you put it on the people to have to make this decision to be about, you know, you're the one who let Donald Trump in office because you voted for Cornell West. No, it's up to Joe Biden to go get that vote, Steph. Just what you said. So if you are going to make this move, if you think at the end of the day this is the move you have to make, don't show your cards right now. It's in the beginning of the hand. Wait a little bit. Make Joe Biden come to you, but he's just going to show you he'll come to you and you won't get anything anyways. Well, you know what? He doesn't even know where he is. Yeah. You know, he's going to come to us and it's not, he's just going to mumble off and some jazz music, music will play him right off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be honest, Steph and ladies and gentlemen, the things, the simple things when these guys go, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. That was the very least I thought would happen is that he would take out his pen by executive order because it could have got done. Or if he didn't do it by executive order, when he talked about the debt ceiling with McCarthy, he would hold out and get it. Where most of the students, 40, 40, 44 million of them in debt, right, would get at least 10000 or 20000 off their school debt, which is just going to give the banks their money anyways on the interest. I thought at least that would get done. Nope. I thought at least he would have a better climate change policy than Donald Trump. You know, who, who Bernie Sanders used to say, Donald Trump thinks that global warming is a... Uh, thing invented by the Chinese, a hoax. But he blew up the Nord Street pipeline. He's dropped way more bombs than Donald Trump, so you don't even get that. So even the minimal things that I thought that Joe Biden would give us, we didn't even get. We got bupkis. We got zero. We got nada. So if these stupid idiots want to make this argument again that the Democrats are better than the Republicans, you need to be prepared to say, uh uh uh, uh. you're not going to get us on this one. You're not going to vote or shame us on this one. Some of us are going outside the two-party duopoly, and maybe we'll get some change. Steph, anything else for this? Uh, you know, I just really appreciate that they had this conversation. I think what's great is you're able to get a, a real deep sense of where they're coming from. And I think that's really important. And it's just like, um, you know, we're outside looking in and watching people have these political conversations. You're like, wait wait a minute, that just doesn't sound that progressive to me right now. What, what's wrong? What's askew here? Yeah. yeah. You know what the thing is, too, as well? When you pick a position, right, and then you try to build your argument around that position instead of the other way around, said, let me look at the facts and let me see what really happened. Let me judge it by what's going on in our society and what Joe Biden did and then come to a conclusion. That's okay. But if you've already started with the point and the factor that Joe Biden is the better choice. All those other things you look for, you're going to start cherry picking to be in your favor of the argument, and it's going to be a bullshit argument like their argument was. Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Tampa, Boca Raton, Orlando, Dallas, <clears throat> Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, and Levittown, New York. Wow, that's a lot of dates. See you there.